Hello folks, uh, today I have the question of 2019, May, June, paper 42. So this question has been uh, skipping me, but now I got hold of it when uh, a student asked uh, uh, this question and uh, he pointed at uh, something that, uh, uh, that that was worth noting. So it, uh, it is uh, concerned with, uh, so there are a lot of chapters involved here. It's about electric field, it's about gravitation, and it's, it's even about uh, the chapter of uh, forces moments actually torques uh, from as so uh, it says uh, two point masses are separated by distance x in a vacuum so an expression for the force f between the two masses m and m uh, still the name of any other symbols used so they simply uh, the gravitational force uh, force yeah um, so it is equal to um, f is equal to equal to g uh, the masses are large m and small m so it should be m m by by uh, x square or r square so where r is the r equal to distance between uh, so let us say separation between them actually it is the separation between uh, those uh, masses those uh, those uh, point masses and then and g is the universal gravitational constant whose value is equal to uh, 6.67 into 10 to the power of minus 11 newton meter square per kg square now the main problem is a small sphere S uh, is attached to one end of a rod as shown in figure 1. So the rod, uh, yes, so we have a thread here. The rod hangs from a vertical thread and is horizontal. So it means that uh, the moment here and here equal. So it is somewhat like a CZ of the whole system. The distance from the center of the sphere S to the thread is 8.0 cm, 8.0 cm given here. A large sphere is brought near it, brought near this thing, near the sphere S as shown. So because of that thing, now what happens is uh, this sphere is uh, is pulling, is pulling this whole thing, this whole thing such that it goes like this. This whole thing goes like this. So while it goes like this, this thread now becomes now becomes somewhat like this. So like this here, and it is still horizontal initially, initially horizontal, and uh, later what happens is uh, now initially the position was like this, and because of something here. Because of something due to this sphere, it goes like this. Initially, it stays like this. So, this becomes somewhat like this. And then, it again becomes somewhat like this. So, initial position here and here. And this thread like this. So, this thread becomes somewhat like this. It goes like this. So, like this, like this. So, you can visualize the situation, I suppose. So, now, now uh, there is a force of attraction between spheres S and L. So, this says is... There's a force of attraction between the spheres S and L. That's why the thread has been carried upward, uh, causing a sphere S to move through a distance of 1.2 millimeter. So the sphere, this sphere, will move a distance of 1.2 millimeters. So from here to here, here to here, it moves the distance like this. This is the arc length actually of this circular thing, arc length. The line joining the centers of S and L is normal to the rod. So the line joining this thing this thing so if i draw it here it's the line joining here so this line is uh, normal to the rod it is 90 degrees here 90 degrees here so 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 now uh yeah show that the angle theta through which the rod rotates is something something like that so we have to find the angle here so the angle is found by simple theories of uh, class 9 or 10 9 or 10 which we can uh, say as this theta is equal to uh, theta is equal to arc length s by r radius so this is the center it moves like this so this is the radius radius so it should be equal to uh, it is arc length is 1.2 millimeter so it is into 10 to the power of minus 3 meters divided this r is 8 centimeter so 8 cm is equal to 8.0 into 10 to the power minus 2 minus 2 meters so this becomes equal to if I do this thing, the answer is equal to uh, 1.2 exponent minus, uh, minus, sorry, this is 3 actually, so 3 is not so clear, 3 uh, divided um, 8.0 exponent minus 2. So that becomes equal to 1.5, 1.5 into 10 to the power minus 2 radians. And one thing to remember is, in the relation theta equal to L by R, L by R, the term theta is in radians, the measurement of theta is in radians, not degrees. We have to take care of that thing now the rotation of the rod so when the rod moves like this like this causes the thread to twist so that means the thread will twist it so what happens is 
so when it moves like this the thread twists so there's some sort of twister twisting in the thread there in the thread the torque t in newton meter required to twist the thread through angle beta any angle beta in radians given by this so the torque in the thread is given by this formula it's a ready-made formula so here we have to calculate the torque in the thread when sphere l is positioned as shown in figure 1 by 2 so we have to so this thread somewhat happens in this thread here so you have to calculate the torque in the thread so that's equal to that t is equal to 9.3 into 10 to the power minus 10 into the angle here is just equal to this theta because initially this then like this so the angle is simply uh, theta equal to theta so that theta is equal to into theta let's do it so it is 9.3 into 10 to the power minus 10 into theta is 1.5 into 10 to the power minus 2 that becomes equal to so when i do this uh, uh, so 1.5 uh, exponent minus 2 into 9.3 exponent minus 10 so that becomes equal to 1.395 into 10 to the power minus 11 minus 11 so if i want to write in 2sf as many of you might uh, demand it will be equal to 1.4 into 10 to the power minus 11 11 uh, newton meter meter so answer is 1.4 into 10 to the power minus 11 newton meter now the distance between the centers of s and uh, this is s and this is l is 6.0 centimeter that's equal to uh, 0 0.060 meters the mass of sphere s is a small mass here 7.5 grams gram is 0 0.0075 kg and the mass of sphere l is 1.3 kg 1.3 kg here by getting the torque in something torque in this thing to the moment about the thread produced by the gravitational attraction between the spheres that means these two spheres attract each other gravitationally and uh, this thing will pull this thing in upward direction upward direction. so this is the force of gravity here force of gravity and this thing produces a torque here this thing produces a torque here it tries to move this thing in anti uh, in anti clockwise manner so by equating this torque with uh, this torque this torque we have to calculate a value for the gravitational constant so what we have to do is so this torque this 1.4 into 10 to the power minus 11 is equal to equal to the torque the upward torque or, or the anti clockwise torque produced by the force of gravity so it's equal to fg into the perpendicular distance so this is the line of action of this force and this is the perpendicular distance and this distance is equal to 8 centimeter which is equal to 0 0.080 meters so into 0 0.080 meters and that's equal to equal to g m m by r square into 0 0.080 that's equal to g is to be found this m large m is equal to mass of the large sphere l l so so, so the mass is the mass is the mass is given here l is 1.3 so into 1.3 into small mass is this 0 0.0075 whole divided r is the distance between these things these things so it's equal to 6 centimeter that is 0 0.060 uh, 0 meters so it is 0 0.060 meters squared into 0 0.080 so this gives us therefore g is equal to 1.4 into 0 0.060 squared whole divided divided so this goes here 1.3 into 0 0.0075 into into uh, 0 0.080 so when i do this in the calculator it will be 1.4 exponent uh sorry i forgot to write this uh, this this is 10 power minus 11 minus 11 so exponent minus 11 into 0 0.060 square uh, divided bracket 1.3 into 0.075 into 0 0.00 by close equal to so this is equal to 6.438 into 10 to the power minus 11 newton meter square per kg square so if i 
need to write it into SF, it will be equal to 6.4 into 10 to the power minus 11 newton meter square per kz square. So, this is the answer. So, let's, let me write it here. So, it is 6.4 into 10 to the power minus 11. Now, the next question is the last one. Last one. So, it's a pretty long question here. Last question is, I suggest why the total force between the spheres may not be equal to the force calculated using Newton's law of gravitation. So it says that, uh, uh, it, it, it uh, tries to tell that the force uh, calculated in this way might not be equal to the simple calculation done by the law of gravitation. It's because lots of things need to be taken care of. The law of gravitation applies to point bodies, but these bodies are not point bodies. One is a bit large and see you can see the radii or the diameter is comparable to this. So they are not point bodies. They are not point bodies. And the other is that uh, we don't have only these two bodies. We have lots of things. For example, this rod. So what happens is even each part of this rod is being attracted by this thing. This thing. So that's why this point area by this, this by this, this by this, this by this. So lots of forces are involved here. And in addition, uh, we have got uh, uh, electric charges also, the spheres could be electrically charged also, and so on. So many things to discuss here. So that's why we require only one point. So they are not point bodies, uh, whereas the law applies to point bodies only. Good work for your answer. So that's the total solution to the question.